We have discussed in previous episodes of iSight how artificial intelligence is changing the game across sectors. So far in this new show, we have largely focused on the business and tech of AI and some of the big players behind it. Today, we'll move away a little and talk about an application of AI. We'll talk about how AI is finding a growing use in the field of medical science, how it holds massive promise, but at the same time comes with its own challenges and risks. It's still early days to speak with certainty about the tangible and live applications of AI in medical science, but a clutch of recent scientific papers has shed some light on the direction in which it could go. Let's start with a study published in the European Heart Journal on September 1. This study looked at whether AI can help identify high-risk plaques in the heart's arteries using diagnostic images. These images, generated by intracoronary optical coherence tomography or OCT, allow the most detailed evaluation of coronary atherosclerosis. In simple terms, this is a disease caused by the buildup of fats, cholesterol and other substances in and on the walls of the arteries. And these buildups are called plaques. Before we proceed, I am no medical expert and in this video, I'll strictly talk about what peer-reviewed studies in reputed journals and publications are saying about the medical technicalities. So, a particularly risky type of plaque in the arteries is called thin cap fibroatheroma or TCFA. These have a lipid-rich core covered by a thin fibrous cap and if they rupture, they can cause heart attacks. Traditionally, OCT images have been examined by labs with deep expertise. It is a very careful process that requires a high degree of skills, with experts sometimes also disagreeing among themselves on the results. What researchers in this study did was that they built an AI system called OCT-AID. OCT-AID was designed to automatically measure the plaques and identify TCFA. The study was essentially conducted to test whether AI-detected TCFA could match the expert findings and more importantly, whether it could predict adverse outcomes. For the purpose of this study, researchers used data from 414 heart attack patients that were previously part of another study. Both human experts and AI analyzed the images over a period of time and also tracked adverse events like the occurrence of another heart attack or an unplanned procedure. Now, what do the findings say? The findings say that AI identified TCFA in about 31% of lesions and experts in about 28% of the instances. It's important to note that this level of variability can also exist between one human expert and another. But what was really important in the finding was the fact that patients with AI-detected TCFA in target lesions had nearly double the risk of major events, 11.9% as compared to 6.3%. It's very important to mention here the limitations of this research. It was based on data from one observational study and wasn't originally designed to prove AI's superiority over expert analysis. The AI evaluations were also done offline and not in real time during procedures. And since the human lab only analyzed target lesions, a full head-to-head -head comparison for analysis of the whole artery wasn't possible. But what the study does show is that AI is a good part of the future of healthcare. But right now, it can't be left alone in live environments. We are nowhere close. There has to be a human doctor and there needs to be a lot of research and trials because even a small mistake could provide very costly in the field of healthcare. There are also regulatory, ethical and data privacy concerns. A second study published in Nature on September 2 said that AI can serve as a tool to improve MRI-based prediction of prostate cancer's aggressiveness. MRI has emerged as a way to improve accuracy in prostate cancer diagnostics, but the subjectivity of assessments by experts has remained a challenge. And earlier this year, a paper in the Asian Journal of Urology said that AI is improving diagnostic accuracy. It said that AI-based tools are also being developed for surgical skill assessment, offering evaluations and feedback to surgeons and that AI is also handy in predicting or modeling patient outcomes. With this, doctors can look at creating personalized treatment plans for their patients. 
empirical evidence from the Asian Journal study shows that AI models exhibit higher sensitivity and specificity in detecting clinically significant prostate cancer. Other use cases of generative AI are the prediction of future health risks of individuals and helping with potential drug discovery for new treatments. AI can be used to understand the property of a molecule and then to predict how it will behave in different conditions. This could also aid new drug discovery or even things like modeling the trajectory of viral pathogens like SARS-CoV-2 which caused the COVID pandemic. We all know that antimicrobial resistance has become a big challenge across the world. Using AI, new antibiotics could be developed faster than resistance can spread. It could also be used to assess if new chemicals would be well tolerated by patients. But of course, for all of this, there's a long way to go. There is a need for larger, more diverse data sets in more practical and active situations. There are also implementation barriers on the ground. Now, let's move on to another study, this time not so appreciative of AI, and one that also brings out a very real pitfall. This study was published recently in the Lancet Gastroenterology and Hepatology. It found that after just three months of using an AI tool to spot precancerous growths during colonoscopies, doctors were significantly worse at finding the growths on their own. And this could be among the very first pieces of evidence that relying on AI tools could hamper a doctor's ability to perform even the most fundamental tasks. The paper describes this phenomenon as de-skilling. As doctors were performing colonoscopies at four endoscopy centers in Poland, they were given an AI tool that labeled suspicious growths. It marked these areas with a box on the imaging screen. There have been previous trials in which doctors appeared to benefit from such AI prompts while performing diagnostics in real time. But the difference in this case was that the study continued even after the AI tool was taken away from the doctors. And what happened after that? While the doctors spotted growths in about 28% of AI-assisted colonoscopies, after the tool was taken away, the detection rate fell to 22%. It's important to note that this was just an observational study. So there could also be other factors at play. The number of non-AI assisted colonoscopies was higher, so the doctors may have been spending less time on each procedure. But de-skilling because of AI is not just a matter of debate in healthcare. It is a debate that is fast picking up pace across sectors. Artificial intelligence is increasingly finding a hold in the field of medical science. But if it is to be implemented and used at scale, the very fundamentals of medical practice will have to change. However, it's amply clear that AI is here to stay and will likely lead to real-life improvements very soon.